Greetings to all Yisrael Mishpacha, the family, elected according to his election, according to his choosing that he has elected a royal people, according to his wisdom, his character, his strength, and to mold them, to shape them, as the old Kiddushin would say, and to Bara to make them into the very image of his son Yoshua Hamushiah. That we walk like him, we talk like him. Our desire, our passion above all things is like him. And above all things we do all to please the Abba. That is vitally important unto us as a nation of people. As we see the torrid pace that we are embarked upon. The time of the season, we see the attitude, the mind of man, and how that the power and the prominency of the Torah is rejected among all people, among all kinds of religious sect. There is no confidence in Yah, and there is very little trust in Him at all. But we are a people that He has elected to Bodak, to have great confidence with the Ruach of Omein that we have confidence in our faithfulness unto him and that we are faithful in all the commands that he commands unto us Yisra'ya and that is vital to us for our strength, our growth that we will trust him but that we will have confidence in everything that he has said he has spoken and according to his commands, his sava, the utterance of his speech that produce law Anything that Yah says, it produced Torah. It produced a way of life to live. It produced substance. Everything that he speaks, he utters, uh, it produces life. And that is vitally important unto us as a nation, as a people, as we wait upon the promises of Yah in a time of the decadence of wickedness and every kind of vile disorder among man to defy Almighty Yahweh, to corrupt his very ways and to cause the mind and the heart of Yisrael Yah to become weak as the enemy seeks out to destroy not only the zira of Yisrael Yah but his own seed. Those that are given over unto his hand, those that are of perdition, they have been elected to serve the powers of hell and they do it with great delight. I want to, as I spoke the last time on Khatve Imat, I want to continue in the path that I began on that last Khatve Imat teaching the utterance. And there are times that I always ponder what I speak unto the people, and uh, there is not one message that I teach or preach that I cry out that I do not see the very lack of the approach that I took, whereby the power of the Ru'ach HaKodash did not have the lead way to dispel, or to teach and to reveal unto us the value of the importance of what Yah commands us. And sometimes I know I do, I will get beside myself, and I want to, as I often do, I want to go back and simply refresh our memory. It is one thing that I say to us, Yisra'ya, there are false men by the tens of thousands. And any time any man uh, commands or speak as though that we are somewhat pro any nation beside the nation of Yah, then there is something inherently wrong uh, in that man. Yah doesn't need us to fight any battle for him. He does not need us uh, to bear up arms for him. This is this polluted, vile, corrupt, right-wing Christianity doctrine that men began to support. And they tell you to go buy a weapon, Yisrael. Well, what can the weapons of man that Yah has made the smith, uh, 
What can the weapons of man do against the Most High, Yisra'ah? How can we confront Almighty Yah of the Melechim of Yah that he shall dispense to fight his battle? So we got this polluted right wing Christian theology that many of men today in their purity of knowledge, very little that they do know, they are beginning to follow the tenets of that which is vile, evil, and sadistic. If y'all commanded us to go buy a weapon, how many literally of the people of y'all can really go buy a weapon? And then you must buy the bullets and things that you can take down your enemy if that's the case. And when one begins to teach that, I want you to know they have no knowledge of y'all. They have no wisdom of y'all. They don't even y'all they don't know you because the power of his testimony, his eduth, that's the witness of his might, his power, his strength, his character, it has been revealed unto them. And they don't know. So if Yah is commanding us according to the teaching of the Torah, has it been misconstrued? Or is it literally uh, that as Yahshua spoke unto his disciple ones, uh, that they had to obey that in a directive fashion. We must get into the intricates of that and see. Now I want this one to fight for me because his weapons are greater than any weapons upon the face of the earth. I know that there is no weapon, there is no contingency of hell that is formed against Yisra'ya as a nation, as a people collectively, individually, that that nation or that weapon can prosper against them. It will not shalach. It will not usurp their strength, their ability, their might, their confidence in Yah. It will not eradicate that out of the bosom of Yisrael. And every tongue that rises up in judgment against Yisrael, it shall be damned. So the loshon, the mouth, the tongue, the feth, that speak to eviscerate, to destroy, to bring down Yisra'ya, it shall be damned, it shall be rasha, it is condemned, there is no judication, none whatsoever, it is already condemned. So if we have confidence in him, if we truly batak, we have confidence with the Amen, that we are faithful in what he commands us, there is a trust there beyond the measure of our ability to calculate. And we have confidence in all that he has spoken unto us. If that is the case, Yisra'ya, then we must trust the testimonies of all. Because one of the most powerful military might that Yah caused and he suffered his children to be brought under the Shabi. The slavery, the oppression of that nation of Misraim. And yet with a mighty hand he brought them out. Who can stand against the winds of his nostrils? What weapons can stand against the breath of his breath? There is no nation, no people. And he is not going to allow the nations to destroy his elect, his zira, his seed, that they are planted in his bosom. He is reminded of them every day. He takes delight in us, although we're not worth a dime. He still takes delight in his people. And the reason why he is the one that makes us sadiq, or he is the one that justifies us. It is not us that justifies us. It is not our actions, it is your. He has simply before the foundations of the earth elected. And we just simply make our calling and our election sure that even in the midst of our most uh, powerful disbuckles, we know that Yah is the one that justifies us. And he is going to fight for his people, Yisrael. He knows that we as a nation, 
We cannot win against the master, the mastery of the military might of darkness. So he is going to fight for us. I want to stand behind this one as Yeshua Isaiah speaks here in Isaiah chapter 13 verse 5. He speaks about a contingency of the armies of Omar Yah, that is the scattered remnant of Yisrael. He says, there is an army and their weapons of battle. It is not based upon the blowing of the smith of the tools of his hands to create military weaponry. But Yeshaya says that they came from the far erech, or the parts of the earth, the far country. He says, from the ends of Hoshimayam, from places that we don't even know. Can anyone name what is constituted by the United Nations, the 186 nations? So they're coming from nations and places you don't know, you don't hear them frequently. You don't even understand even the culture of the nation of that people. But there is an army that is coming, Yisrael. Even Yah. And it tells us that the keli, or the clothing, or the garments uh, of his indignation, uh, and the weapons of his indignation, his za'am. That is the terror, the af, the anger, the displeasure, the keen resentment of Yah. And the weapons of his indignation to destroy, to chabal, to bring them down to the depths of the ruins of Sheol, to the grave and hell, to destroy the whole land. He's going to destroy every nation of people that have uh, tried to bring down his nation, Yisrael. He is not going to give us the power to suppress people, but he's going to give Israel the power to rule over the nations. We're not going to oppress them. We're not going to suppress them. We're not going to intrigue them wrongly. We're going to intrigue them according to the mitzvah and the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. We shall rule over the nations. We shall be the czar of those that implement government and the stability of government, Yisrael. And it began from the throne of the one whose primary weapon, his keli, is his indignation. You cannot fight against that, Yisrael. You cannot fight against the indignation of Almighty Yahweh. The weapons of the world uh, and the weapons that have, uh, that have been constituted by the smith that Yah has made, uh, then they cannot match the authority of Yah's weaponry, his military army. He is Almighty Yah of Shabbat. He is the Abba of hosts. Of what hosts? Of the armies of Hashemayim. He is Yah of hosts, Yah Shabbat. He is the one that uh, is the one that commands the armies of Hashemayim. And so the weapons that form against us, regardless of what weapons they are, they cannot overcome the power of his constitution that he has put in the bosom of Yisrael. He has written, he has hatab, he has engraved that mark in his people. We have the mark or the top of Yah, whereby uh, that the power of the wicked uh, cannot subdue us or overtake us uh, because we are exempt from the judgment of Yah. We all going to stand before the judgment seat to receive every reward of what thing uh, has been done in this body. But we as Yisrael, there's a greater reward for us because all that we do in this body, it is by the power of the body of Yeshua HaMashiach. For in Him we live, in Yeshua HaMashiach we move in the power of the Torah and the direction of Yah's command. And in Yeshua HaMashiach we have Hayel, not just high, but Hayel. We have life. We have the power of the military might of Almighty Yah. If one can put a thousand to flight, when the enemy rise up against Yisrael, Yah, if one can put a one can put a thousand to flight and two ten thousand, then we have the power of Almighty Yah, Yisrael. Yeah. The enemy cannot prevail against us. Yeah. And there are men that misconstrue the Torah, the writing of the words of Yah, 
and they slant them for their own religious crop intents and motives. And this most despicable, damnable, wicked thing you call right wing Christianity. It is a vile thing that we become the protectioner, the protectors of this wicked nation. We protect and we defend the Torah of Yah. We are set to defend Torah. And not with the weapons of this world. You can't defend Torah that way. We defend it by the standard and the incense and the power of the scepter as our Zachim brought out to us and the rod of his truth, Yisrael. It's the rod of the Torah that corrects us and keeps us in a line with Yah. And so we shall pursue in Yah's command by his indignation. Yah said, March around the city seven times, and then the wall shall crumble. I still believe that. I will be Yahushua, Yahshua, and trust Almighty God. Let, let us confront this in the book of Lucas, chapter 22. We must understand this profound utterance from Yahshua's mouth as he speaks unto his disciplined ones. He speaks of a time and an event whereby we truly must overcome the very agony battles or the agonizing battles of our flesh. We must be totally committed unto Yah. It cannot be a pretense and a falsehood that we will give him a, a portion of us. He wants all of us, Yisrael. You cannot give him that which is subpar. And so this is the element that Yahshua was speaking here in Lucas chapter 22 and verse 35. And I want to deal with one aspect of this on this Chat Ve'imat. And then on the next one he asks, will I will deal or conclude on the latter part. But let me begin reading here, the book of Lucas, chapter 22 and verse 35. And Yahshua said unto them, when I sent you without purse, we had nothing to rely upon. We have no wealth in this uh, scattered land of Bavel. We have no inheritance here at all. He has scattered Israel in the, uh, to the four corners of the earth. Uh, and we have no heritage at all in this land, Israel. I don't care if you buy land and your name is on the deed. It doesn't mean anything. Because if the taxes are not paid uh, and those kinds of things, you lose it. So I sent you out with anything that you could rely upon, but what I had uttered unto you. Uh, there was no cash, uh, no monies or any substance uh, that you had, but what I had spoken. Uh, I sent you without purse, without strip. He said, you didn't even have shoes. Yet he said, Hashia, like you were without, there was nothing that you were in need of uh, that was not sufficiently supplied for 40 years he supplied the people their shoes grew on their feet he sent down matter from heaven he caused the brooks of the coolness of the water to flow in the midst of Yisrael they were not a diseased people and sick and brought under the very yoke of, of that nature Yisrael this is the Abba the people that speak the lies telling you to buy guns if any man that calls himself a messenger of Yah, a prophet, a, a man that is a messenger of strength, and he speaks not according to the Edos, according to the testimonies, uh, and the Nobi or the Navi'im, the prophets, uh, is because there is no light, there is no Torah in that man. He has no light in him. There is no awe in that man. There is no power of the testimony of Yahshua Hamashiach. And so these polluted right-wingers, as they call themselves right-wingers, they're liars. They're liars. They are the children. They are the zira of darkness. Yahshua does it when he sent us. He sends us in the power of the commands of Yah. We don't need shoes, we don't need clothing. That's why Shaul said having food and just ream it, you be contented. Don't worry about nothing else because your sure is sufficient and he supplies all that we need, Yisrael. He said you had nothing but yet you did not have shah, you did not lack or have need of anything. 
And they said unto him, we did not lack anything, nothing. We walked in the experience of this light with great confidence what you commanded. We went forth, the demons, the powers of hell cried out. They had no authority over us. Even the rulers of the city knew when we entered into the city, uh, the power of your word, your Torah, it was evident in us. Uh, and they knew that they could not, with their military guards and their mighty men, they could not subdue us. Uh, they could not. Then said Yoshua to them, But now, you that have your purse, uh, your riches, what you perceive is a value, the wealth that you have accumulated. Your sure said, and you that have your purse, he said, I want you to take it. I want you, what, our purse, you understand what he means when he say purse. He's talking about the volume of what's in us. The volume of a man's heart. It's like our flesh, it's like a, a purse is something that you put things in. A wallet is what you put valuables uh, and important documents in uh, to make sure you have them. Uh, and this purse, uh, it is our levim, uh, it is our levim, our hearts, Yisra'ah, that we allow the Torah of Yah to fill our bosom. He say, now that you have purse, you have your own uh, desires, your own motives, uh, and your own uh, passions. He said, let him take it. And likewise, his strip. And he that has no khara, no sword, you don't have the power of the ruach. You have not the power of the two at swords to cut, to rip, to tear down the corridors of hell. Yoshua said, let him sell his garment. That's important. I want to deal with that aspect. What is the garment? The garments that we must sell. Is this something that is physical? Can I ask you a question? You have garments, don't you? Now, how much you think, if you go out and purchase a decent weapon today, uh, you're talking about $600, a, diff a decent pistol. You may get something for two fifty-three, dollars uh, but it's going to jam, it's going to do all that. You need something that every time you pull that hammer back, she just fires. Boom, 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 boom. That's what you need. You understand that? That's a low-tier pistol at seven, eight hundred dollars. To get a real nice pistol, something that's decent above that tier, you're talking every bit one thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. How do I know? Because I have looked, and I know what they cost. So, what do we think as a people? How much you think of your strip, your garment, your possession? You would have to sell just to buy one. Is he talking about a literal khara, a sword? So what can a man do with a sword against ten? Tell me. Would Kephah cut off the servant's ear? Your shoe sure say, put it up. Put it up. And cutting off the ear was a sign that Yisrael and that group of men did not hear what he had said. The old zin, he cut off the old zin. That there is no... There are you in the spiritual and mental perception and the power of that revelation of Yahshua. They had no concept of that. As we today, Yisrael. So he says, go sell your garments, everything you have. And he says unto them, and I want you to go buy a sword. He said to them, I want you to give up everything. This is what he's commanded them. I want you to give up everything that is of any value to you. That you will have total confidence in my commands, what I instruct you to do. That you will know that regardless of how the situation may appear in your visual perspective, that what I command you to do is greater than that. Because he knew that the battle that was ahead of them... He knew the situation, the circumstances that would arise out of the midst of the great chaotic mess that they would have to contend with Yisrael. So he is speaking not only in a metaphor, but a directive of speech. Sell everything and by the sword of the Ruach, by the living power of the word of Yah. He said, buy. You sell everything you have. And you go buy a sword. Look at what he says in verse 37. 
And I say to you that this that is written her tab about to him, he said it must be accomplished. It has to be finished. It has to be concluded. It has to come to its end. It, ha it must be accomplished in me. I was reckoned, I was taken, I was perceived as a part of the transgressors. Did not even the most prominent Pharisaic minds question the Shafrim and the legal minds of legislation of Torah? Did not they question Yahshua? Did not that? So when one did not operate in the precise letter of the Torah, he or she was, were transgressors. So he was numbered with the transgressors. He was numbered with them. He was reckoned among those. For the things concerning me. He said, for the things concerning me, they have an end. And they said, you're sure, Hamashiach, behold, here are two swords. And he said to them, it is enough. You must understand even the metaphor of the two swords. A house, Yisra'ya under Reboham, Shulumosan, a house divided. You have Ephraim and then you have a Yehudah. You have a house, one that thinks by a personal physical identity that grants them uh, the very inheritance of Yah. Then you've got those that think because they have a personal physical identity, uh, yet uh, they understand the power of Yahshua, but they don't come do the commands uh, that he commands us to do, Yisra'ah. So he said the two swords, uh, and I will teach on every aspect of every numerics of scripture, so you will understand those things. Uh, so he said we have two swords. Uh, here th there's a people, a nation that is divided, which should be one nation, uh, and both uh, don't even even know that they have the sword of the Ruach of Yah, which is the power of the living word in Yahshua Hamashi. They don't understand the revelation of that. You think that two swords among them, Yahshua said that was enough. So let us go get two pistols. That should be enough among us. All right. It is, it is utter stupidity of the minds of men today. They have no spiritual proclivity or intellectual uh, de de determination of what is written in the Torah of Yah. It's based upon uh, a corrupt mentality that they are received from corrupt men, corrupt women, and they believe it. Did he not say that two swords were enough? How many disciples were there? Was it two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve? And two were enough? What if you got 12 men with 12 swords? How do you handle that? If you got 12 men, you got two swords, who are you going to give the swords to? Kaffa? He denied him. Gokahanan, Bartholomew, Thomas, come on. Gokahan, who are you going to give the sword to? Who? Yet two were enough? So you polluters of lies and your treasony against Yah. Get two pistols for whomever in the congregation. That's all you need, all right? Uh, these are corrupt men. They don't know Yisra'ya. And so if one teaches this kind of polluted uh, right-wing uh, theology of lies, uh, then people will buy it. Especially those that are protectors uh, of the Constitution of the United States. Damn, the Constitution of the United States. We have a Constitution that is greater than that. That is the Constitution uh, of Yah in Yahshua. We have a living uh, Constitution because not all men were men under your Constitution. All right? Hallelujah. All right. So that's why you have amendments. This book, these laws, uh, these mitzvah, they need no amending. They need no amending. They need no amending. The 613, they need no amending at all. You're sure fulfill them all, Yisra'ah. So two swords among twelve with him, that was enough. Yoshua said that 
is enough. It was a greater Pacific than just having two swords. And one day I will teach that Yisra'ya. It is the divided house of Yisra'ya. How it is divided. You have Yahuda and all the regala and all. You have men that they think that is the regala or their dress. And all of their palasteries and the way they look. Uh, that, that it is a ritualistic form. And yet they're still unclean. They deny Yoshua HaMashiach. And they're unclean men. And you have those that acknowledge Yahshua HaMashiach and then they base their principles on things in the Torah that satisfy nothing but the proclivity, the desire, the passion of their own damned of a corrupt flesh. So two swords enough. Two swords are enough. It's enough. Two pillars. Upon these two pillars hinge all the Torah of Yah. It is of great significance and great importance. So is he commanding us to get us a Ruger, a Smith and Western? Is he commanding us to get an Uzi? And so that when the, when the trials of the wicked pursue us, are we going to turn like those in Ibram, that even they live by Imuna, the children raised from the dead, they wandered throughout the earth, no certain place to dwell, but yet they had the confidence, the botak in Almighty Yahweh. How are we going to live, Yisrael? How are we going to cover the parameter around a place like this? If we had a hundred guns, when do we sleep? It is just idiotic and stupid. And there are men that are purporting these lies. And people are buying them because they are fearful and they don't believe Yah. The fearful and the unbelieving, they are not going into the kingdom. They're not going. I want to proceed a little farther, all right? Hallelujah. Now I will dress out these garments. He said, sell your garments. That we must sell this, this nature. We must abandon it. We must deny it. We can't defend it. We must let it die. We must impel it daily, what he is commanding us. We must impel our flesh, the affection of it, the lust, the drawing. Don't our flesh draw us? My, I know mine does. Now we can't sit here in our hypocrisy. He is saying, destroy it. I want you not to move, but to move it, to, to kill it, to destroy it with every effort, with, with energy, bring it down. He says, sell your garment, your garments, and I want you to buy a weapon. He did not say weapon. He used the word sword. So many today will say that means a pistol or a shotgun. They are liars. Yoshua could only speak according to whom he was. He is the living Torah. And anything outside of the perimeter of the life or the revelation to reveal unto us, to make known the value, the importance of Torah, it would have been a damn lie. And we know that he could not lie, Yisra'ya. He came in the immutability of Almighty Yahweh. He was immune from that. Because he was imat, he was truth. He was the faithfulness, the omain, the, the imuna, the confidence of God. That's who he is and what, who he was. But listen to this in the book of Mishli, Proverbs. I want to deal with the uh, the different types of garments. Uh, and I want to point them out to you, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. The wisdom of Shlomo speaks unto us. Your says, I want you to kana. I want you to buy. That's what he commands us. He says, I want you to ascertain. I want you to obtain. I want to, you to create. I, I want you to make sure that uh, you possess. I want you to kana. To buy. In order for you to buy Yisrael. In order for you to buy the truth, Ha'imat, then you must sell out. I was coming up, that was a song that I'm sold out. Bought out. You must sell out, Yisra'ya. You must sell out to this begat, this garment of treachery and lies and corruption. You must sell it. Sell it to the gates of hell. Sell it to the dirt of the earth that it came from. He said, I want you to buy iman, truth. And Yah says, and sell it not. Don't sell truth. You buy it. You cannot, you acquire it, you obtain it. Whatever it takes to obtain it, 
You get it. That's what Kana is. Whatever it takes. You must do what it takes. You must deny your flesh. You must possess it, Yisraya. You must procure this. He says, uh, you buy the truth, uh, and so it not you buy Huchmah, the, the wisdom of Yah, the experience of Yah, Proverbs 23, 23. You buy the wisdom of Almighty Yah, hallelujah. You also buy instructions. Instructions, uh, that's Muzah. And Muzah is the correction, the, the chastisement, the chastening of Yah. His correction, his rebuke. We don't buy rebuke, do we? That's what instructions are. It is Musa. It is his counsel. You must buy instructions, Yisra'ya. And not only must you buy uh, those kinds of instructions, hallelujah. He tells us that we must buy bin or bina. We must buy understanding. Wisdom uh, is the vital essence uh, in our experience with Yah. When we, when we get wisdom, uh, we began to develop uh, a rapport with Omar Yahweh through Yahshua. And we began to have experience with him. And through that experience, it caused us to be, to understand, to discern, to know the attitude and the actions of Yah. You cannot understand one unless you understand the concept, the wisdom of the one that you interact with. And the more you interact with that individual, have you ever said, well, she's really nice. Oh, man, I didn't know he was that nice. Or he's a beautiful man. He's a very precious man. I was talking this morning about a person that when I worked at IBM, his name was Mike. His name was Michael. Isn't that amazing, my Micaiah? He was one of the most beautiful men. You, he was a very precious man. He really was. His ruach, very gentle, very kind. He was but a very brilliant and a bright man. I enjoyed fellowship with him, with him and even going out occasionally we will go out to lunch together so when a man begins to he begins to uh, draw from one's wisdom uh, he begins to understand and so when you get the wisdom you realize how the value of the principle of understanding uh, we must draw from the wisdom of Yeshua to understand Almighty Yah his weapons come from his indignation what weapon can stand against that? Their massive constructs, their buildings, their bulwarks against the winds of his nostrils. I was reading and looking the other day in one of the cities in Alaska. It is snowed in. They have 15 feet of snow. And one man was digging out, he said, my house is back there. He could not even get in the house. And Russia, with one of their liners, a ship, oil, they're trying to bring oil or get oil there before the spring. And they only go so many feet an hour. The Coast Guard, so they're trying to break the ice. They had 15 feet of snow. And one man said, that's not the issue now. It's what's coming now. 40 below zero with the wind chill factor. Cut off Israel. Who can fight against that? What man can come out and bear arms in that kind of condition? Tell me. There was nothing that withstood the flies that y'all sent or the frogs. Do you understand when he said the plagues of death? That they had no time to clean up that mess. The stench of the nostrils. It was just overwhelming, overpowering. And then flies land, maggots. And that is one of the most disturbing things when you're in the garden. Or you're working on flies and gnats are constantly. They will drive a cow, a sheep, a goat. They will literally drive them insane. Can you imagine that with stench? What army can fight against that? What weapons do we draw upon to defend ourselves against the master of all creation? There is nothing. There is no weapon. We can buy all the guns we want to Yisrael. It will not save us. If we live that way, we're going to die that way. We're going to live on the sword of the rock and we're going to die that way. By the commands of Yah on His time, in His time, according to His will. 
You're not going to pick up weapons to defend nothing. He is our defense. We just defend Torah. That's what we defend. We defend his image, so that's what we buy. What? We sell our garments. Yoshua says, sell your will, sell your, sell your desires. Because this is only temporal. You live several years, if by some chance of strength, your grants unto you. you. He adds a little few more there. You understand, Yisraya? But what? Can we weigh that against the eternal beauty of Yah and the riches of the Melchot, the kingdom? We can't weigh that against that. There is no value of comparison at all, period. Period. You can't even weigh it out. Because there is no scale that can weigh that to give you any kind of balance. There is no balance there at all, none whatsoever. There is no equal there. None whatsoever, Yisra'ya. So we, this is what we must buy. When he was speaking of selling your garment, giving up to your will, that must be a dedication unto Yah. This is what Yahshua is implying. He wasn't implying you go and sell uh, your garments and then uh, you, you bring back two swords. That's all they had. That's all they had. Is that enough? He said that is more than enough. Sufficient is greater than that. It's more than enough. Hallelujah. Even, even, the, even, even walking in the midst of the nights uh, and, and the wild animals, all of that was contained from them. You understand, Yisra'ya? It's not these fairy tale lies as these purporta of, purporters of lies uh, and falsehood. These are evil men. They're evil men. They do damage to the Torah of Yah and to the conscience uh, of the minds of the people of Almighty Yah. That's what they do. So this is what we buy. We began to buy truth. Uh, and we in this beggar, this, this garment of treachery and lies. Uh, he says, sell it. Who are you going to sell the rights to the world? Sell it to them. Give them back their ways. Give them back their attitude. Give them back uh, their, their training. Give them back uh, their fashion. Give it all back to them. And you buy the Torah. You buy truth. Yisra'ah. Hallelujah. That's what you do. Uh, look, look at what, One of the most important things here for this end time. Uh, this is, this is a message unto us here, as it was unto the assembly there of Laodicea. And we are, we are connected to that. In, in the book of Gilgal, Revelation 3.18. This is what Yahshua commands us. He says, um, this is what he commands us in Revelation 3.18. He says, Amusa, I counsel you, uh, I correct you, I rebuke you, I counsel you uh, to buy of me, uh, he says, Keshem, gold. And when you, when you look at that word Keshem, gold, it was the medium of exchange period. It is the same thing as a dollar bill. It is amazing, my Zachin, that how that uh, these men would tell you to buy gold and silver, and yet they want your dollar bills. And their banks are stacked high, their accounts with dollar bills. They're not stacking their accounts with gold and silver. They want the dollar, honey. They want the dollar bill. Okay, if I got a bigger piece of silver, let's exchange. This is worth $500. Give me 10 pieces of that. That's a lesser value. You think they're going to do that? No, give me the money. Give me the money. And see if you can go buy silver without money. The word kashim, it means gold, silver, dollars, rubles, whatever the currency or the medium of exchange is, Yisra'ya. He says, I want you to buy me. He did not tell us about the world. He said, I want you to buy me a rich experience of imuna, faith. That's what I want you to buy me, faith. Tried with the ish, the fire of my counsel. Is not the all-consuming fire? So our imuna is tried by his utterance, Yisra'ya. Tried with fire. That you may be Esha, you may be rich, you may be happy, you may have the riches of Yah, you may be healthy and rich and happy and satisfied. He said, and not only that, but I want you to make sure that you have on a pure, clean, a white, uh, simla, a garment. To wear the garment. What is the simla of Yah? We're covered. We put on the garment of Sadiq or Sadiqa. The righteousness of Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, and I want you to be rich. 
And you can have on this raiment or this garment, Yisraya, this simla, this clothing of, of Yah, the righteousness of Yah. That's our covering. That's our clothing, Yisraya. And our military components uh, is our shield of imuna, our sword of the ru'aka, our helmet of salvation, our feet shod with the preparation of the message of Yeshua HaMashiach. We have on the breastplate uh, of the covering of our loins, our heart. Uh, it is the Sadiq of Torah. How do I know it's right? Because Yah, his Sadiq is an everlasting olam viad, uh, righteousness, uh, and his Torah is truth. Uh, so that's what we're covered with. This is the simla of Yisraya. We don't have the garment of begat. We sell the garment of treachery and lies and deceit and this damnable right wing theology of lies telling people to buy guns. That's a damn lie from hell, Yisraya. I don't repent of that. I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I don't uh, uh, obfuscate that or, or get cowardly on that. We need the weapons of Yah. We must buy them. We don't go to some lying thief out there and try to buy a saruga. He has 400, he wants 800, 900 for it. Uh, we buy the truth of Yah. There's no weapon can stand against Yah's truth. Uh, what mind can stand against the mind of wisdom? Uh, what, what understanding can defy Yah's understanding? None. What counsel is greater than the counsel of Yah, Yisraya? There is none. This is the trick of the enemy. Let us not pursue that. You that are listening, don't pursue these liars. Don't even listen to them. They're, they're liars. Give them this message. He said, you need the garment that you may be clothed. For what reason? And that your shame of your nakedness, lachava uh, and odum, that the shame of your nakedness and your uncleanliness do not appear. And then Yah says, I want you to anoint your eye in, your spiritual, your mental, your physical perception, your eyes uh, with eye salve. I want your eyes to be open. As your sure laid hands on the eyes, and the eyes were open. The blind saw. And we were blinded by our own sin, so we need the eye salve. We need the anointing all of the Ruach HaKhodash. To anoint our eyes, Yisrael, that we may be able to see, uh, that we may have uh, our eye and our spiritual, our mental uh, perception intact according to the Torah of Yah. And everything is judicated, judged, or based upon what the Torah says, not upon emotions and feelings. This is what we need, Yisrael. The weapons of man can do nothing against us. The weapons of man cannot destroy us. We have seen that with Yisra'ya, that Yah has put us on the bondage of great tyranny and no weapon, even though the enemy has tried to annihilate the remnant of Yisra'ya, Yisra'ya still stands today. She still stands. Why? Because just that name alone implies that Yah prevails, Yahweh prevails. Your name should not be called Soprana, your call, but your name should be called Yisraya, the power of my prevailing in you. It is either Yah prevail or your damn wicked God is a dog, which he is. He has no power to save you. Damn their gods. I didn't intend to talk like this tonight, I wanted to. And that's the truth, but I get, ir I get irritated and irated. With these liars and people follow after behind their lies and they pursue their corruption hallelujah can i proceed i shall proceed let's go back to yeshaya isaiah here 55. here is your grants unto us as a nation of people he commands he speaks unto us even in the same breath yeshua was speaking that he gives unto us and he grants unto us that he has, he has embraced us. He has brought us into his bosom. And he wants us to freely receive this, Yisraya. And even as Yeshua utter unto, unto the stubborn, hard-headed Yisraelites, Yisraelites, as we are, and this is our connection here, our heritage, uh, still we don't know how to receive the blessings of Yah. A pistol is not going to bless you with the blessings of Yah. It's not going to save you. That's the cops that die. That's the kids in the hood that they got, they got their 357 mag and the other one got his Uzi. And yet one dies and one lives. It is stupid, Yisraya. 
There's no power of hell that can subdue us. And these are men that, that will say that uh, they have power. These are these cowardly men uh, that talk about casting out demons. Uh, they have power over the wicked. Uh, I will, my friend. I believe that uh, two true Hebrew uh, Israelites uh, men of strength and power. There's no weapon. Even, even their stance along uh, cause people to ponder. We were down to the flea market on the first day, Yom Rishon. And there's one man that I deal with at the time. And it was us for Ach. And he, we were talking. I don't know if they heard him. But this is what he said as his compliment to the Ach. He said, you know, I, I look at you, you, you brothers, man. You know how people, I say, you look so strong and healthy and vibrant. You all know what you're doing, man. He doesn't even know what we're doing here. It's just the beauty of Yisra, Yah makes a statement. And the enemy knows that there's something there that they don't have. You casting out demons and you need a pistol? It sounds very weak to me, man. You got these whole houses out here talking about casting out demons, folks in that spitness, pukery mess out of their mouths, and all the so white stuff in the corner of their mouth. You need, a, you, you need to get yourself clean out. You need to clean out your physical being, first of all. Uh, minds in balance, the chemicals in balance in their silly, crazy minds. Uh, they have no power of Yah. They're, they're weak, cowardly men and women. You understand? L let me read this quickly because I'm going to make sure Zachin, I finish on time, all right? It says here in Yeshua, Isaiah 55. This is your sure in the present tense and the future tense. As the Novi speaks unto Yisraya, he says in Yeshua 55, when, Ah! He says that everyone that saw me, that thirst, that need the quenching of their tongue to sense the water of the living wells, everyone that thirsts, everyone that thirsts, come you to the water. What is the water? He is the water. It's not the word of Yah, the living water. It's not your shoe, was he not the living water? Is he not the sistrum or the fresh, pure, pristine water of Yah flow? So when we are thirst, let us go to the Torah of Yah and find the necessary water that we need. Let him come to them. I am the water. Now we have no money. <clears throat> he said, and he that has no money, no kesheth. No kesheth. He said, come. And I want you to buy. I want you to buy. How do you buy with no money? How do you buy the waters with no money? There are countries you must buy your water. This is one. You get free water. He said, come and Shabba. He said, not only that, but eat. Yoshua says, uh, take my flesh. For it is me. It is the Torah indeed. Eat. It's a hard thing to do. See, these men cannot eat truth. They don't know how to eat truth. Yisra'ya, he said, eat, yes. Come, he tell us to buy yain, wine, the fresh press of the wine. He tells us, and milk, he says, without, lo. Not king, yes, lo, without, no. Without money. And without price. Tell me, how do you buy this? How do you buy the weapons of Yah without money? There's no price to them. If he gave you a price, you couldn't even pay it. If Yah was hungry, what would we feed him? Don't you know that the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to him? The cattle upon a thousand hills belongs to Yah. What would you feed him? He said, come by without money. You don't need money. What we need, it doesn't take money. You can't get this with money. Our weapons, you can't buy this with money. You cannot buy the swords that Yoshua said they are sufficient uh, without money, Yisrael. You cannot buy the pillar of the commands of your uh, buy this uh, foundation to establish in your bosom with money. Upon these two, to love Yah with all your mind, soul, strength, and all your substance. To love your neighbor as you love yourself. Come upon these to hinge the Torah. 
Hence the whole command structure of Almighty Yah, Yisrael Yah. Those are the sorts that we need in this hour. We need to love Yah with us. We need to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We need to learn how to love Yisrael Yah. Hallelujah. He's going to defend us. He has raised up this army. Do you understand? He has raised up the contingent of hell. Did he raise the Pharaoh? He has raised them up to fight against us. They come after us. He has raised them up. He has solidified them and strengthened them. He has brought them all together under the banner of one God. And that God is Hashatan. Because he's the prince of the powers of the air. He's the God of this earth. And the one God. He has greater than that. He cannot be classified with the dogs. Yah says, uh, you dogs, I'll let you turn it around, okay, and make you gods. You're nothing but damnable dogs. You're unclean and you're filthy. And that is the truth, Yisra. Bear with me. Hallelujah. As my Zokhin I would say, hallelujah. He said, come by this you cannot buy. He said, he say, why do you spend your money, your kesha? Why are you spending money on silver and gold? Why are you spending money on that? Your sure tells us what to buy. Come you that are thirsty, come on, he said, come and buy the waters and eat. Buy why? The yayin of Yah, the fresh wine. The wine that heals, the mollifying wine. He said, why do you spend money for that which is not bread? There's no life in that. There's no lechum, there's no bread. Why do you spend money on things uh, that have no, uh, no, no, no value to you that don't even enrich you? He says, not even lechem, it's not even bread, Yisrael. He says, it's not even bread. And, you're, and you labor your labor for that which is not even Shabbat. It doesn't even satisfy, it doesn't even fill your heart. It satisfies not. It doesn't make you happy. You tell me if we all had a pistol in our homes, that's going to make us happy. You're going to feel safe. You're not going to feel safe with the pistol. You're not going to feel safe with guns and weapons, Yisra'ya. If anything, you're thinking if someone crash in on us and get the gun and it, it beat me to the spot, what do I do? These are stupid individuals. They don't know ya. They're trying to save their flesh and the flesh is going to die. He said, you spend your money on those things that do not even survive. Yah says, I want you to Shemak, listen diligent to me. Why don't we diligent with all effort, with all desire, with, with the great purpose, diligently. We give all of our attention, all of our heart. He said, listen diligently to me, yeah, and eat that which is tov. What is tov? His Torah, his word, his daba. And he says, and let your nefesh, your complete man, the fullness Hafez of delight be satisfied itself, he says, in the dachin, in the fatness, and the riches of that, and the blessings. And that is what the dachin is, the blessings of God. Let our being just rejoice in the blessings of God, the merchaya. Come on, Israel. We just get fat in this truth. Hallelujah. Just get fat. We get fat, we get rich. Hallelujah. We go, we go to the storehouse of your every day and buy. Hallelujah. We're not worrying about no 357 mag. We got something that's greater than a 375. It is, it, we, we got something that is greater than a 357 magnum. We got the Za'am. We got the Za'am. That's the indignation of Yah. That's his keen resentment, his anger against this wicked world, this wicked nation, against the enemies of his people, against those that oppress and suppress uh, his people. That's what we got. We got the za'am, the za'am. The resentment, the af, the king resentment. The distaste for those uh, that are doing his people wrong. That's what we got. That's our weapon, Yisra'ya. That's, all, that's the only weapon we need, Yisra'ya. That's the only weapon. Yah says unto us, incline, verse 3, your ears in your ear. He says, and I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to haya. I am that I am. I want you to hire. Come. That's what the word come is. It also bow to enter in. But when you see that I am that I am, it is hire. Hire. 
He said, I want you to hire. Come and bo, come. Come to me. He says, and Shemach here. And your nephesh shall live. If we hear, we're going to live. You think that a weapon is going to cause us to live, Yisrael? He says, Shumach, and you shall live. You shall have uh, Mahad. You shall be a, a living being of life and substance and riches. He said, and you shall live. He said, and I will make a Brit a covenant, Leolam Viat, an everlasting covenant with who? With the house of Yisrael. Then he says that this what this, this, this is the summation of it all. He says, even the sure, the omen, the faithfulness, the confidence, the assurance. He said, and even the sure, the omen, hasset, the mercies of thy weed. He was sweet unto thy weed, wasn't he? Sure he was. That's his covenant with his people, with Yisrael. It's just that we must rid ourselves of these garments that we are wearing. The garment of this flesh. We ought to hate the garment. We ought to so near to despise the garment that has been spotted. That has been spotted by the flesh. You ought to hate it. If you got a white outfit and it's pretty white, if that thing gets a spot in it, you just it just loses all... There's nothing you can do with it. Things like that you make and wear one or two times and that's it. And you got to go somewhere in that where you sit in no dust or nothing. You don't. Because once the spot gets in there, it's there. You're not going to get it out. Period. It loses its flavor, its beauty. It's, ah. That's the truth, Yisraya. And so we must hate this garment that has been spotted with this leprosy of our flesh, this disease, this khali, this garment, this dressing. We were the simla, the simla. We covered by the righteousness of Omariya in Yahshua. Moving quickly. Yah says in verse 4, See, I have given him, Yahshua, for witness to this people. A leader, and he says, and a commander to this people. That's what Yahshua is for. He is, to, he is to survive us. He is to command us. You understand? T turn down on that. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The garment. The simla. What is this garment? What garment was Yahshua talking about? We got to sell out to the world, Yisrael. I'll give us an indication of that in the book of Yehuda, in the book of Jude, 123, quickly. The book of Jude, 123. Yah says, and others, we that were delivered, others delivered with fear. And then there are those pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment, even the simla, even the baga, the begat, the garment that has been spotted by the flesh. That's what you're sure. They didn't realize the great battle that they were, they were headed toward, Yisrael. And that's why Kepha, though all men forsake you, I will not. See, he should have hated even the, that garment that had been spotted by his own hubris, his prideful nature. Your sure has pulled us out of the fire of destruction and death. We ought to hate the garment that we were wearing uh, when he pulled us out. Sell it. Give it back, give the world their mind back, their ways back. And buy the swords of Yah. That's all you need to. Hallelujah. The Aban, the witness of his son. That's all you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all you need. We must put on the garment. The Simla, the right dress of Almighty Yah. We must buy that garment. And even in the midst of our greatest battles, he will send the Melach to deliver us. As even in this account, in the book of Acts, in the book of Maaseth Shulishia, Acts 12, 8. Hallelujah. It says here, and the Melach said to Khafa, he said, gird, gird. We should gird our loins with Iman. Your loins girded about your heart, your mind, 
with truth. He tells Kepha, gird yourself. He says, and bind, put on your sandals or your feet shot. The message of Torah has been preached and preached unto you, Kepha. Put on your shoe. Put on that message. This is more than him putting on his shoes, you understand. Yes, sir, I am. He says, and so he did. And he says to him, cast your garment. Put on the garment, the clothing of your city about you. And he said, follow me. He said, put some faith on, man. Get, get your clothes on. Get your heart. Come on, get up and follow me. Can you imagine through the prison doors, through the dungeons of the darkness, no lights like this. And he tells him to put on his clothing and follow him. They dressed themselves down as Zohim brought out to us when they came out of Misraim. They had riches and great. Their shoes. They put on their clothes and they got out. You understand? We must put on the clothing of the righteous garments of Almighty Yah and come out of this world and be ye separate. Come out of the Shabbat. Come out of the prison of the world, Yisrael. That's what we got to sell it back to her. We don't need your weapons, world. We have the greatest of all weapons. Yeshua HaMashiach. We have those weapons. We must be drawn to the attention of the Torah. And what the Torah speaks and teaches us, Yisra'ya, the weapons of Almighty Yah, the weapons. These, this world is, we will cover with a garment of violence and lies and all of that. Yeshua says, sell off that garment. Sell the garment of lies and corruption and vileness. Mil Mil Milkiya, the book of Malachi 2.16. Milkiya. For Yahweh, the sovereign master of Yisra'ya, says that he hates putting away, or he hates the divorce, putting away of one's wife. He says, for one, one will cover, or kasa, one will conceal and pretend. We, we know about the kasa, don't we? We seal and we cover, don't we? We seal our corruption. Come on, Yisra'ya. We hide it. He said, for one covers or kasa violence with his garment, his lepush. Now, how do you cover violence with a garment? You, you saw Zakhe were trying to bring out to us the very, the very nature of Yah's speech, how he talks to us in the voice of Yah. I want to utilize a little bit that on the Shabbat. I won't go into it now. So, what is the garment of violence? You tell me I can go dress in a black suit, so that's the garment of violence? So this garment is more than something of a physical, physical clothing, isn't it? He said, you're, he said, I want you to take off this garment, uh, or his garment, this lebush, uh, this remit, this apparel, uh, says Yah of Hosea. Uh, Therefore take heed to your ruach, take heed to your spirit. We need to take off these garments. You know, we dress ourselves. Can you not tell what kind of garment one has on the, in the expression? Uh, you can look at their brows, you can tell the garment of hatred and, and nastiness. Uh, you can tell that. You never go to the store, they don't want to serve you. You're like, what's your problem, man? Is that a problem, woman? Talk to me, Yisra'ya. So he says, take off the garment of lebush. Your garment. It's a garment of violence. Hamas. We're violent against who? Yah. Hallelujah. And that's what the garment represents, what Yoshua said, take it and sell it. It represents a violence. Come on, did you see the flesh of Kephah rise up? Did you not see all of them forsaking him? You see how our flesh forsake him? Sell it. Shaul says there's one among you that you don't even take consideration that he even has his father's wife. He said, when I come, I will set all things in order. He said, what you do with one like that? You take the dirty bastard and, and give him over unto Hashotan that he may destroy his garment, his clothing, his flesh, prevent you, that Yah may save or Yashach his nefesh, deliver him. Turn him over to hell. So we must, we cannot hold on to this garment of violence. We're violent against Yah, we're violent against this Torah. The simple things of the Torah that speak so forthrightly, we're violent not to do it, Yisrael. We can't do that. We can't do that. We can't do that. 
And it expressed throughout. You can, you, can, you can examine the word garment and the word sword. And you will see, you can only examine what Yahshua says by going to the Torah. You must go back to the Torah or the old writings of the Torah. He is the fulfillment and the renewed covenant. Or, or this Brit Hadassah, the writing of, of the covenant of Yah in the Dom of Yahshua. He brings the spiritual edifice or the light to that. And you will never understand the spiritual light unless you understand the writing. You must understand that. That's why men don't understand. Hallelujah. There's one that did. His name is Baruch. He was the secretary of, of Yeremiah. He says to us here in Baruch 5.1. He says, Yisraya put off all Yerushalayim. He said, I want you to put off the garment of mourning and affliction. You tell me that we as a nation, we have had to wear the garment of mourning and affliction? What does that garment look like? Tell me. He said, put off the garment. The simla of mourning and affliction. And he says, uh, put on the comeliness or the beauty of the splendid uh, that comes from Yah forever. Put off that garment. And put on the splendid garment of Almighty Yah. Yeah. The mind dress in the wisdom of revelation uh, because you're bought the truth of Yah. Put off that old garment, he said, put off that old flesh. Hallelujah. He says in verse 2, cast about you a double garment put on. A double garment of righteousness which come from Yah. Now, I, now that's all right. Give me a double portion. We used to say, give me a double portion, huh? That's what he says That He says, cast around you, put on. See, that was two. Didn't he say the two garments? When he said that y'all should, we have two swords, is that enough? We need on the double garment of y'all's righteousness. Baruch. Baruch 5, 1 and 2. He said, put on you the double garment of, of the righteousness of righteousness which comes from Yahweh. And he says, I want you to set a diadem on your head. The crown of Yahshua. Set Yahshua the pinnacle of your rush, Yisraeliah. You set a diadem on your head of the splendor of the everlasting, the Olam Viad, Yahweh. What is that splendor? Yahshua. That's why he is the head of man. He is a, he is a Rosh Yisrael. Yeah. We need to put on this double garment. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Sell out. Yeah. That's what the double swords or the two swords represent. I can show you a plip free of scripture what it represents, Yisrael. Yeah. But these ignorant men, they don't know. They're ignorant in their own conceit. For a man hold the Torah of Yah back in unrighteousness, these are wicked men. They incorporate the most damnable vile name, Jesus, Lord God, with his name. That's the damn wickedness of a man's heart. That's a corrupt man. That's a corrupt man. Well, you spell his name with a large G, laugh from hell. These gods are created things out of the corrupt mind of man. I'll read a little arc. I want to hurry up. Let me move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeshurak 14, 17. There's nothing like an old garment, is it? There are things I, I, I'm almost, I almost have some of the tendis, tendency of my ima. I got garments and things I've had for so many years. And I said to myself, I'm going to get rid of all of it because I don't need it. But look at what Yeshurak says, 14, 17. He says, not some flesh will call all flesh, all bazaar. That's what flesh is. It's like a buzzard. Bazaar. Proper word for it. All flesh wax old like a garment. For the decree from the beginning is, you must surely die. So all flesh wax old like a garment. Old garments, you don't take no pleasure. That's why we must remember our creator in the days of our youth. That when we are all Yisrael, that we will not... Or we can take pleasure in those things that we have done in, in our youth for Yah. That when we get old, we won't have no pleasure in our old days. If you don't remember him in, your, in the days of your youth, when you get old, you're not going to have any pleasure in Yah. So that's why old folks today, they have no pleasure in hearing his name. Are you talking about Yah? They don't want that, Yisra Yah. And that is the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it your tongue? Sure is. The garment, the garments that we speaks 
of the Begat, this garment of deceit and lies. Yoshua knew that they were covered with those garments of treachery. Who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? Can I sit on your right hand? That we speaks of great prophetic, prophetic utterance of eloquency here in Tehillim 100, 9, 1 and verse 18. He speaks about the, the, the demise and the tremendous agony of the wicked that Yah shall bring upon them and those that are the haters of Yah's elect. Psalms 109 verse 18. He say, as he clothed or labash, he dresses himself with cursing. He's talking about the wicked or the, or, or the kalala, the wicked. He said, like as with his garment, his mat, his cloth, his remnant. And that is how in that case, his garment is expressed just like you say, mad. Mad, M-A-D. So let it come into his bowels like water. So whatever garment you're dressed with, whatever kind of garment you're in, it's going to come into your bowels, which represents your inner, your heart, your mind, your thinking. He said, let it come in like water. Those are the haters of Yah and despise Yah and the haters of his people. He said, like the oil into his bone, let it cover him. Let this garment of wickedness cover that man. He said, let it be to him as a begot, a garment. Let it be to him his own deceit, his own treachery. Those saying what we had a proverb, what you do unto others is coming back on you. Well, I know what the Torah says. But what you do to me is coming back on you. So Yah said, let his own beggar, his garment of treachery, let that be the garment of his inward being, of his inward part, let that be, which covers him. And for the girdle, his lawn is not girded about with truth, uh, for, and for a girdle wherewith uh, he girdled himself continuously. You tell me a girdle of curses and kalala instead of the garment of, of the our loins girded, our hearts, our minds girded about or the girdle. A girdle is what tighten you up, doesn't it? You don't see the flaws with the girdle, do you? And you tell me that Yah says this is the prayer of thy weed, that he be girdled with that continuously? Let this be the reward of my adversary, of my sultan, from Yah, and to them that speak evil against my nephesh, against my people, the covering. That's a garment, Yisrael, the begat, the man, the garment. So you tell me Yahshua wasn't commanding us to sell some rags like this? What can I get for this? We purchased a pair of shoes at the flea market. A pair of Bostonian shoes. I, the man didn't even know what he had. Five dollars. I said, New Yorker, you don't know what this is, man. These are Bostonians. <clears throat> I remember when I met his father years ago. I remember going out. I don't say this boastfully. I say this. I remember then. I went out and purchased him a pair of Bostonian shoes. That's over 25 years ago. 25. That's close to 25 years. A pair of Bostonian shoes. And I will never forget, I paid $116 for those shoes. That was then. That was then. Man, I said, $5. Oh, man. I tried them on. <clears throat> of course, my young patriot, he tried them on too. He said, oh, man, I, I couldn't. That, that, it was settled then, so I couldn't buy them. You understand? But $5, he said, I got. Five. And I said, New Yorker, these Bostonians, I said, these young boys, they don't know what this is. These young cats, they, this is old school. He, New Yorker didn't even know what he had. He didn't know what he had. He could have got $15 with him if he wanted to. He's trying to make a dollar and get it over with. That's what we must do. We must buy truth. We must sell out to this flesh, this garment. We need a double Garment of Yah's righteousness. All right, Yisraya, that's what we need. That's what we need. And there were men, there were prophets to speak in a way to remind us of what is vitally important to us. And Yeshua, the prophet, he speaks in chapter 88, verse 33. He tells of the story of Yahshua, Yahshua. He says in Yeshua 88, 33, 
He says, and Yahushua rose up to the assembly of the people, and he brought the Urim, the Urim. I'm going to teach, I'm going to bring something out on that, on the Shabbat, because I, I don't like the way I finish the service on the Shabbat. I got something for us, all right? You as well. He says, and he brought the Urim by the order of Yah, and the tribe of Yahuda was taken, and Akan, Akan, and Kami, Kami was taken, and Yahushua said to Akan, Tell me, my son, what have you done? And Akan said, I saw among the spoils, and use this word here, a goodly, a precious garment. It was a bagat. It was a garment of deceit. He dressed his mind in that garment. He said, I saw a goodly garment of Shana. And look, he did not say 100, but two again, all right? That's why Yahshua said the two swords are important. He said 200 shekels. Why not 210 shekels? 200 See, that's what the enemy is trying to use to fight against Yah. And that's what these liars are telling people. Take your shekels and buy weapons to fight against Yah. He says, I saw 200 shekels of silver. And he says, and I saw a wedge of gold, uh, 50 shekels of weight. There's nothing more valuable than your precious imuna. That our faith is going to be tried like gold in the fiery furnace of Yah. Nothing like it. He said, and I lusted, I covered them, and I took them. And he said, behold, they're hidden in the earth in the middle of my tent. I saw the garment of the world. I, I saw the beggar. I saw the treachery and the lies. And that's what Yahshua was saying to Kafa and the disciplined ones. Don't buy the garments. Don't dress yourself like the world. Don't allow your mind to be dressed like that. And we know the story of Akan. He was taken from the midst of Yisra'ya and stoned to death because he brought sin and death and the vengeance of Yah into the house. I want to read from Yahushua in the closing here as he gives us an account. Yahushua ben Nun, Joshua, Yahshua, Yahushua, chapter 7, verse 20. It says that Achan answered Yahushua and said, Indeed, indeed, he said, I have chata, I have sinned against Yah, the sovereign master of Yisraya. And this is what I did. This is what he did. We sin against Yah when we look at the worldly garments and we put them on. Our minds must be cloaked with the Sadiq of Yah. He's our sin. He said, I was so among the spoils, a precious, a beautiful, Babylonian garment, and 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. He said, then I covered it, and I took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth, what, in my heart. That's where we hid, hide things in, in the earth. Earth vessels, we hide it. We're going to be evil against each other. We hide it against each other, can't we? That's sad, isn't it? That's a wicked garment, Yisrael. And I hid it in the earth. In the midst of my tent. This body is the tent, the tabernacle, isn't it? I hid it in the tent. And the silver is under it. We cannot dress ourselves in the garment of Beckett. This garment of treachery and lies that we're treacherous against Yah. We lie against Yah. We fight against Yah. We cannot do that. So what garment must we sell? We have no value in our garments. They're not worth a nickel. In the natural sense of the clothing that we wear, they have no value. None whatsoever. Period. We must wear the simla, the garment, of the Sadiq of Yah, that our minds are covered in the Torah of Almighty Yah. We'll continue the next time. May Yah enrich you all, Yisrael Yah, your friends that have joined us. May the riches of Yah rest upon called Yisrael Yah. May the strength of Yah fill your bosom. Don't let these liars tell you to buy guns and defend. This is this damnable right-wing lie. We defend Torah. We take the sword of the Ruach of Yah and defend Torah. We put on the garments of Sadiq. Don't let these damn liars and these trickery of liars tell you those lies. We have one of the baddest weapons in town. And Yah is bad to the bone. He's bad. He's bad. Yeah, he is bad to the bone. And that's his weapon of his za'an, his afa, 
his indignation. There's no weapon like that. That's our defense. To let the world come against us. He's going to stand up and fight for Yisrael. What do you tell your brothers in land that they have no money? Their daily life is to live. These are wicked men in this country. May Yah brach you. All Yisrael, Yah, may he strengthen you. I want to read just a little of this article and then we're going to dismiss. All right. I saw this today and I was just, man, it's so arrogant and wicked and so corrupt. He says in this article, it says, I want to just read a little bit of it. 160 billion. How do you count 160 billion? 160 billion planets in the Milky Way. Let me just read you some of the arrogance. A statistical analyst based on a survey of millions of stars suggests that there are planets for every star in the sky. So every star, there's a planet. Listen to these arrogant beasts. And probably more. That would add up to 160 billion or so in the Milky Way. We concluded that stars are orbited by planets as rule rather than by the Acceptor International Research Team reported today uh, in the Journal of Nature. This is what these beasts says. Some of the words were cut off, so I may miss that. There's one thing I want to show you here. This one person, uh, his name is Didier Kulas, said, I'm very surprised by the number. I'm not surprised at that. That should be more planets than that. Over the past couple of years, finding forms of very planted, planet hunting missions, this is what they use. They use this technique they call, they call uh, results from three main techniques of planet detections are rapidly converging. They use this thing that they call, they call uh, the words are cut off, I didn't know that. It's called, it's called planet or it's called, where is that? Hallelujah. Mm. But they use, it's this detection that they say they use to measure density and, and the curvature of stars and they can tell you where that's a planet. That's how ignorant these, these bastards are. It says, whether the actual number of planets in the Milky Way is 70 billion or 250 billion, big numbers, 10 to 30 planets for every human on the earth. So, so they say there are at least 10 to 30 planets. See, these, these fools are trying to find their God, just like Nimrod. They're trying to find their God. And so there's a, you know, they're going to go to Mars. Let them go to Mars, these fools. So they, they, they deny and defy, and they want to make everything hundreds of billions. You can't put no number on what. Yah has, he, there's no beginning with Yah. He just is. And you don't know when he said, let it be, as far as the creation of all things. There's something greater than this. But you cannot measure that. Man doesn't have the ability to measure. He doesn't know 160 billion stars. If I was a man that was banking on money, I would, I would, I would, th th that's not even, that's not even zero, zero, zero point, uh, no, point zero, 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 a billion of a, 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 of a numeric of how many out there. As far as stars. Come on. He's so wide. Can go around him so high, can go over him. Come on, even the even the heavens when he stands up, man, eh? man, man, move up a little higher. Hmm? The heavens is thrown, and the earth, man, that's not even his. Uh, just his footstool. It's his footstool. He can he just put one foot on that bad boy. I, I'll read this to us because it was just amazing how ignorant these people we are. We used to think that the earth might be unique to in our gal galaxy. Daniel Kubas. That's all I can get out of that one. But I wanted to just get one thing. I wanted to get that. I want to, I'll read it for us. All right. I want you to hear that. These people are sick. And they're trying to defy Yah. They're trying to defy him. And they're using these little petty type of utensils and they think that they really are actually measuring what's out there they can't even tell you how far the east is from the west now I know I cannot 
You think these fools, when they can't even tell you the depth of the ocean, they can't even get down there? Something right here. They can't go there. They cannot go to the depths that they have. They built nothing that can go beyond so deep. The pressure will kill them. Y'all say, I got some places you'll never go. And you think at what they call this galaxy and this Milky Way and this solar dimension. You think they've seen out of that? They're stupid beasts. Bounce and sign off they think that, you know. It's one thing that light, you know, if you shine a flashlight up in the air, I'm telling you, that light will travel, it will travel a million miles until it hits something. You, you just don't see it, but it travels millions and millions and millions of miles until it hits something. It is just traveling. 186,000 miles per second. It's just from that one. That light does this. That's just a little flashlight. And it doesn't dissipate until it hits something. And you think these fools out here, they, they got their little scopes and say, oh, I see something. They're foolish. He confound these fools, you understand? Because they are fools, Yisrael. They know not, y'all. They don't know him. They don't know how many planets, what we call planets. They don't know how many, how many out there. You don't know what's out there. We got enough dealing with what's here. I don't need, I don't need to deal with no other planet. I know he made the, the, that big sun up there, which is the government by day and the moon at night. That's all I need to deal with. I'm not worried about nothing out there, 100 billion trillion light years away. That's stupid. That is so stupid. That's stupid. It is stupid. Your guns are stupid. Buying your guns, buying your silver is stupid. I buy the Torah of Yah, the wisdom of Yah, the understanding of Yah, the counsel of Yah. It's not going to save you. Your guns are, and all of your silver, your gold is not going to save you. Your money in the bank is not going to save you. You buy bread, worms are going to be in the bread. He's going to curse this place. He's going to bring down his vengeance upon this wicked nation and the earth because uh, they have mistreated his house. May Yah enrich you all. Yisra Yah and Yashus. And let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Just a little over, but I. Let us turn toward Yerushalayim. We brach you for all things our Abba, for Yisra'ya. Your people gather with us on this Shabbat in the house. We pray for all. Call Yisra'ya, wherever they're gathered, scattered throughout the nations of the earth. We ask you to look upon them in a mighty way and give strength unto the bosom of your people. Heal us. Make us free. Give us wisdom and understanding in all matter. And Yah, we ask us, us to give unto Yisra'ya the double garment of righteousness. Give us the double, the two-edged sword, Yah. We need that which is the Torah of Yah to fight against your enemies, to defend your Torah. That's our battle, simply to defend the Torah. Our living, our way of walking, our attitude in our Ru'ah. And we shall do that through the power of your Shua HaMashiach. And for that, we acknowledge you and we shout, Hallelujah! 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 Amen. Yabrak Yisrael.